Hello everyone and welcome back to Pacific Rim Theory. Um, I can't believe I'm even making a video about this to be honest because I did not think we'd be here. I did not think something like this would happen. I was hopeful but we got a freaking prequel in the works. A TV show nonetheless which is absolutely insane and so exciting and I, I never thought <laughs> this was even going to happen. I remember we got in and out so I was like yo we're back. Pac Room fans, we're back. What? And then we've also got a three part graphic novel series, which is in the works, which is going to be a sequel to Uprising. So that's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. But yo, new content. New content. That's all I'm excited about. I don't care what it is. I mean, I do care, but I'm just happy about new content. But um, yeah, this video isn't going to be covering. Um, the graphic novel um, has I found the announcement of the prequel series much more intriguing to talk about so I thought I'd make a video to discuss the news on that and what we know so far about the upcoming TV show and to just really share my ideas on what I'd love to see from it so yeah without further ado let's dive in I'm excited um yeah so let's get into it so on August 19th Variety published a article announcing that Legendary Entertainment had entered into a television deal with Eric Heiserer, a deal that would allow him to develop multiple IP-driven projects, one of the first being a Pacific Rim origin series. Now, Eric is a known film and TV writer that has worked with Denis Villeneuve on Arrival, which he wrote the screenplay for, Netflix's Bird Box, which again, he wrote the screenplay for, and the YA series Shadow and Bone, which he developed. So he's not only familiar with writing for television, but also in genres like sci-fi and fantasy, which is a positive sign. But in regards to the series being a prequel, this wouldn't necessarily be a new territory for the franchise, as we have had prequel comics like Tales of Year Zero and Tales from the Drift, the first which explored the events that happened a year before Pacific Rim took place through different character perspectives and the latter, which chronicles the life of a ranger duo that piloted the Mark Juan Jaeger Tacit Ronin. But I think a lot of fans, including myself, have always felt that there was more potential with a prequel, as there's so much lore yet to be explored, as well as characters' backstories that we haven't delved into. For example, let's look back at those first few minutes of Pacific Rim that details the start of the Kaiju War and how it affected society. If you haven't seen my video on that, I highly recommend checking it out because the arrival of the Kaiju has such an impact on the world economically, politically and culturally that even that alone would be worth making a show out of. Like imagine a ground level perspective of the events of the Kaiju War through the eyes of a working class citizen, an Andor-esque exploration of the turmoil that ensues because of these attacks, the riots, the financial decline, the environmental impact, the rise of the black market. Like, there's so much to explore there and that's before the Jaegers were even built. So if budget is ever a question for the series, I think that would be a great alternative. But I think all of us, myself included, want the show to explore the height of the Jaeger program and its golden age. I want to see the heavier Mark Wands I want to see Cherno Alpha in their prime. I want to see Stacker Pentecost piloting Coyote Tango. I want to see the Rangers being heralded as rock stars. So with that in mind, I thought I'd share my idea of how I'd like this series to go. First things first, I think it's paramount that the series starts with the emergence of the Breach and the first Kaiju attack in San Francisco. Trespasser was the beginning of the Kaiju War and experiencing that five-day attack that resulted in the deaths of 10,000 people would perfectly set the tone for the series and lay the groundwork for just how much of a threat these creatures are. Plus, characters that we know and love were present during that attack, like Stacker and Tendo, who both lost a family member during the incident. Stacker lost his sister, an RAF pilot that was killed by trespasser, and Tendo lost his grandfather, who died from exposure to Kaiji Blue. So not only could this be used as an introduction to these characters, but it could also set one of them up as the protagonist of the series. 
which is exactly what I'd want. Now, Stacker being the main protagonist not only allows us to see one of the most beloved characters from the franchise again, but gives us the chance to witness the rise of the Jaeger program through someone who was integral to its success, and later gives us the opportunity to meet a younger Mako. So already, we've got a setup for some major events through the perspective of an authority figure and a future pilot of a Mark I Jaeger. So that's a win-win, right? From this point, we chronicle the next three kaiju attacks, Manila, Carbo, and then Sydney, in which we follow the destruction and turmoil through a character that will later become a Jaeger pilot. Herc, for example, would be an interesting character to choose, as his wife died in the attack, and her death, as well as wanting to protect his son, would be a great motive for him wanting to become a ranger. Then after those attacks, we are introduced to Jasper Schoenfield, who will present his idea to create Jaegers as a way to fight the Kaiju to the UN in a conference in Seoul. I think this would be a great way to set up and showcase just how difficult and also somewhat a miracle it was for all these countries to come together and put aside their differences in order to make this a reality. As we know in the real world, such an idea seems unthinkable and impossible even. But I think if we saw all these leaders arguing and bringing up historical views before being forced to see reason, it would show just how paramount the Jaeger program was to humanity's survival. A final act of desperation, if you will. When the UN finally agrees to the program, the next step would be to follow the creation of the first Jaeger, Brawler Yukon, as well as the training of their pilots. Now, Brawler Yukon's construction also coincided with the creation of the Pond system, which was invented by a scientist named Katlin Lightcap, who was also responsible for the Jaeger program's success. She and her fellow co-pilot, Sergio D'Onofrio, also had a romantic relationship, which would be cool to explore and to see how that affected themselves and their piloting of their Jaeger. But it is only after Brawler Yukon's two victories against the Kaiju, Karloff and Kame San, that the PPDC finally starts to hire other pilots, and Shatter Domes across the world are being built. And it is later in the year that our known favourites, like the Wei Tang triplets, Herc, and Sasha and Alexis enlist into the Jaeger Academy. Tacit Ronin, Romeo Blue, Horizon Brave, Coyote Tango, and Turner Alpha were also launched in 2015. And that is where I would end the first season and set up the next season as the start of the golden age for the Jaeger program. So as you can see, with this idea, I think it would be a good blend of exposition especially in regards to the origins of the Kaiju War. But with Brawler Yukon, we would also get to see how the Jaegers were built and what the first Mark 1 was like in action, before setting up the introduction of characters that would later become heroes in the war for the next season. But the biggest concern for the series and I think their creators, I think is going to be time. Time in regards to how many episodes they get and how long those episodes are going to be. Unfortunately, television these days doesn't really afford for long-term storytelling anymore. Everything has to be straightforward and to the point. So that could raise some issues and force them to take a quicker route to get to the golden age of the Jaeger program, which I do not want. But I guess we'll have to see how that turns out. But yeah, um, that's my thoughts on the prequel announcement. Um, I would love to hear what you all think of my idea. Please do share your own in the comments. I'd love to read them and discuss them with you all. But yeah, I'm just excited to see what is going to happen to the community and um, more eyes being on this franchise and the possibility of what that means for the future. So yeah, I can't wait for that to happen. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.